Rebel for Jesus. 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 Hello and welcome to this episode of me. Right, sorry about that. Um, completely unprofessional as I am a proper amateur. But I think that's good. Right, so what we're talking about today is cats and dogs. Now, <clears throat> I had a thought yesterday which has prompted me to make this video. Um, and if you're not familiar with what I've been working on lately, it's to do with the whichever way you're pointing. The eyes on that feline are different, you know, they close up like a slit. Um, uh, and they're different. And um, so I've been looking into that and uh, what creatures in the world have these slitted pupils. And it turns out you've got fox, you've got cat, you've got um, hyena, you've got gecko, crocodile alligator, and the viper snake. And um, I thought that was very interesting because, uh, you know, they're all pretty crooked <laughs> animals that lack honour. So this is like my theory that I'm running with at the moment is that uh, pupil shape windows to the soul says something about your role in the earth and uh, animals with a uh, elongated pupil like that tend you know like cows and antelope and stuff you know like they're the flock they're, that's what we look after the shepherds with the round pupils we are the shepherds and those stumbling blocks those uh, cowardice and uh, duplicitous type creatures with the elongated slit vertical slit eye <clears throat> so it's just a theory right <clears throat> and um, so what I was thinking last night I was thinking you know dogs they you know they really serve their master I've never had a dog Personally, you know, really wanted a dog, didn't want a, the responsibility looking after it and everything else. Um, but you know, the people who do have a dog, you know, they the dog has its master and it serves that master. I mean, it uh, Rupert Sheldrake, I think it is, doing work on you know how dogs know when their owner's coming home and everything. They've got you know, they're so keen, aren't they, to serve that master. They really want to. It's like their purpose in life. Um, now, cats are not like that at all to us, right? We don't find that particularly strange, you know, cats are cats. But it did make me wonder what with cats and dogs seeming to be domestic animals, um, different from all other animals, or wild animals, you know, they they seem to want to be around a, another being who's, you know, that they can get fed by and looked after, but they can sort of serve in their way. Now, with cats being so, uh, <laughs> I wouldn't say reluctant, but they're not exactly faithful like the dog. So, the thought was, did cats have a master race? You know what I'm saying? Like there are no vertical slit-eyed apes that I know of that I can find. Yeah, we've got a vertical slit-eyed canine, vertical slit-eyed feline, vertical slit-eyed reptile, crocodile. There's no vertical slitted bird or fish that I know of. Um, but you've got the feline, the canine, the lizard, the reptile, the snake. Where's the ape? I mean, maybe there never was one. Maybe what with apes being in forests or using their hands and jumping around in trees. There may well have never been a vertical slit-eyed uh, ape. 
but then you know why have we got domestic cats and to say that um, okay so you know people have domesticated animals dogs chickens cows sheep you know they all seem a bit domesticated very used to living in existence with humans but the cats are able to hunt run free they could go and hunt for themselves they don't need us necessarily so why do they hang around why do they hang around and why why are they not devoted um why do they not devote themselves like a dog does to its master to a cat anyone's had a cat they know that if the neighbors started feeding them you know the cat wouldn't ha show particularly much loyalty they might still come back and frequent their favorite warm dry place and if there's people who stroke them you know the cat's gonna if the cat likes stroking that is the cat's gonna come around for that but it's not the same loyalty there so this is making me wonder you know is there was there is there a vertical slit eyed ape and if there was then the cats felt like the dogs feel towards us towards them the cats wanted to be around them be serve them and but you know are they gone or are they still here so we're going to go on a supposition that there was a vertical slit eyed ape that the cats did serve and we're going to talk about them because <clears throat> you know cats they're pretty spiritual aren't they they are spiritual they're like all into telepathy aren't they You know, that's what a cat is doing all the time. It's around you. It's reading your mind. And projecting his own opinions. Basically. see they do serve a master they continue to serve the vertical slit-eyed master but as we know you can't serve two masters so they reluctantly put up with us depend on us for food and shelter yet all the time they're informing their masters. I know this sounds ridiculous and far-fetched. But you need to open your mind. It's not that ridiculous and far-fetched. If you don't think of what you know in terms of the last few thousand years. Because let's face it. If we go beyond 10,000 years. We really have very little idea of what was going on. But we beings, we've been around for hundreds of thousands of years. And if you include all the apes, millions of years. So what's been going on all that time? Millions of years. Well, we know one thing. And that they've built these gigantic pyramids all around the world. And they still stand today. Impeccable building. Stuff we would even struggle to do today with with all our machinery. So you've got the Great Pyramids in Giza. There are pyramids in Bosnia. That have been covered with growth. They're in uh, Indonesia. 
they're in America. I think this is going to be Graham Hancock's latest thing. North America, I think, is going to start uh, showing up signs that they were there too. And South America. And Af Africa, wherever, right? Everywhere. So there was something of intelligence here. And it wasn't us. We may have been part of the labor force but we didn't design it we have no idea what its purpose is for so that should tell us that we're really missing out on something so to say it's crazy that cats are really advanced in telepathy is a bit of an assumption they could be they could be well practiced it could have been their thing. Right, with dogs, it's smell. You smell anything. Follow a scent. They'll f follow it. Find it. Cats could be something more of a mind power. Now, if these vertical slit-eyed apes had a big head start on the, uh, on the rest of us round-eyed apes, and they were able to, you know, get on in the world and flourish and experiment with whatever they were doing. Who knows what they might have achieved? Like, there's more than one way to skin a cat. <laughs> there's going to be more than one way to make a stone block. Now, they can see evidence in the cuts to the block. In South America, they can see that very, very high velocity cutting tools were used. And they can also see that somehow part of the rocks that are put together look like they've been plasticized so like they became like plasticine for a moment pressed into shape or whatever you know that's it's beyond what we we could be even capable of so we just don't know how they did it but they did it and it does look like in South America uh, there was a big um, flat leveled off platform made could have been a launching platform apparently a, a load of gold was taken and <clears throat> we can only hypothesize as to what might have happened but personally I got I could hypothesize right now I mean we could include lots of things what about Atlantis we get Atlantis from Plato. Plato talks about these great people who lived there, but some sort of evil came upon them. Now, maybe they were these slit-eyed apes, and their, their lack of honour um, caused them to um, fight each other, and someone blew up the island. <laughs> far-fetched but maybe they they had something to do with that maybe they had a problem a population problem or something and they could see that you know they didn't have the numbers to deal with us round-eyed apes I mean there are no slit-eyed monkeys or apes anywhere so perhaps at some stage you know we took a disliking to each other and they were got rid of and the remaining slit-eyed apes even with their technology was limited they felt they wanted to get out of there and perhaps they left a small remnant in South America to uh, keep an eye on things keep a low profile and um, communicate to them what was going on and 
with their patients. Their plan was to um, allow us to flourish, even hasten our development. Gives a bit of technology, maybe. In that, in a sense, to the old adage, give us enough rope and we'll hang ourselves, sort of thing. You know, because and we, you know, we we would have happily done that, wouldn't we? If you know, people didn't keep telling us, look ruining the planet here with all your plastic crap and all your pollution uh, you're not going to be able to survive on this planet if you continue like you are <clears throat> um, but those vertical slit-eyed apes hunkering out in a crater on the far side of the moon waiting for us to our demise and perhaps doing all they can sneakily to screw us up as well get us to hate each other <clears throat> perhaps they've been the little gremlin in the machine for all this time and interestingly if you watch the film Gremlin Gremlins um, when they're, they're the cute little furry one uh, they don't like bright lights do they because uh, in the bright light their pupils would narrow and you'd see their vertical slit eyes but when they turn into gremlins they still don't like bright light but in the film it shows their vertical slit eyes so yeah, I mean, I've got this idea that all these things are available to us the knowledge is kind of hidden in plain sight because I, th I think this is something that um, governments and that they you know even if they knew this they'd never who wouldn't have right mind would pitch this to the people you know there's a bunch of aliens there sitting on the moon trying to screw us up and waiting for our demise I don't know. it is very far-fetched but I think you've got to look at the world around you and the creatures that we share it with is a very important part of that and I think humans are forgetting that you know we've been uh, insulated with our animals that serve us and the rest are wild animals and you know I mean get keep them out of our farms and <clears throat> it's not the right thing to do but that's what we've done I mean grazing the lands has partly what's ruined the planet um, because you, the sheep and the cows and everything they just eat everything you know so um, trees won't grow because they'll get eaten in their first year they look pretty much like a blade of grass and it's people you know their, their wealth was counted by how many animals they had so they got greedy want more animals than they, need, than they needed you know so that's that's our thing isn't it we want more than we need if we just had what we needed and were happy with that and left the rest, you know, that would be a good thing, I think. But anyway, so I just did think, you know, we've got these dogs, our loyal servants, so willing, so keen to serve us, and other cats serving. A vertical slit-eyed ape living mostly on the far side of the moon and um, visiting and trying to screw up our success in a sense they don't want us to be successful because they we're different than them they probably consider themselves superior been around longer, got more knowledge. Probably look at us and think, look at these young, foolish, stupid idiots, they don't even know what they are. And um, hopefully, we will learn more and more about what we are and uh, change accordingly. Okay, I think that'll do it. Ciao.